Well, welcome to the Connection Point Worldview Podcast. My name is Ron. I'm here with Dr. Zach Breitenbach and Pastor Trey Shigley. They make up our Worldview Ministry Directors at Connection Point Christian Church here in Indiana. 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 <laughs> Indy is my dog. Anna is my wife. And so uh, we, we all reside here in Indiana. And uh, that's also where this ministry resides. This is a podcast that's really designed to help you as a parent or guardian go deeper into places that your student has already gone. And this particular episode uh, is another installment of a series that you guys are doing with the middle schoolers right now on the story of the Bible, which is really kind of the story of Christianity because it goes uh, into church history, which obviously is beyond uh, the the Old and the New Testament. So, um, Trey, what's this series all about? Uh, Can you give us a summary of last week's teaching as we get going? Yeah, so this series, we ultimately want to give students a good perspective of how did we get here and where's their place in the bigger story uh, that is unfolding around them, God's story. Um, And so we're covering kind of a summary of the Old Testament and then the New Testament, just seeing kind of the story of the Bible, but then also continuing that through uh, Acts and church history. And then it's like, well, all of these church denominations and splits and, you know, Christianity is so unique. What is the basics of what it means to be a Christian? Like, what are the Christian essentials? And so that's kind of the the overview of the series as a whole. And last week we started the series, and so we did an overview of the Old Testament. And the Old Testament answers a lot of big worldview questions. And kind of, uh, there's so many small stories in the Bible, and those are the things you learn growing up, and um, you, you pull good lessons from them. But when you look at the Bible as a whole, it all fits together into one big overarching story, uh, answering questions like, well, where did everything come from? What, what are humans? Where, where are humans from? And what went wrong with the world? Um, you know, and then what is the solution to the problem? And where is everything going? How is it going to end up? So those are kind of the big worldview questions that also make up a story. And the Bible itself can be viewed through that. And so last week we talked about creation and how God created everything out of nothing, and it was good, and, and humans are made in his image, um, and we were in perfect unity with each other, with nature, with God. Um, and then obviously what went wrong, this is what we call the fall. And this is humanity rebelling against God, being deceived by Satan, and choosing to do things on our own terms, and walking away from, from God and sin, entering the world, and through that, death physical death and also spiritual death, separation from uh, God. And then the rest of the Old Testament, uh, we gave a brief overview, and it's essentially just preparing the nation of Israel to receive the Savior, to receive Jesus. So uh, through Adam and Eve and through Abraham, Moses, David, the prophets, they're constantly looking forward to someone who will crush the serpent, who will obey God's law perfectly, who will reign forever. Um, and who will rescue them from uh, what we're enslaved to. And so that's kind of what we covered last week. Awesome. Yeah, so if you want a little deeper dive, you can obviously go back and listen to last week's episode on this. But uh, Scripture can be viewed then as one big story. The Old Testament talks about creation, the fall, and then the setup for the ultimate hero. So how is Jesus the climax of the story? Yeah, so we have this problem in the story that's caused by sin, and we have death, physical death, spiritual death, separation from God. Um, We live in a very broken world, which is, uh, if one teaching of the Bible is obvious, it's that. We, We can all agree on that. So how do we fix it? Well, it's all pointing forward to Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate climax in this story, the ultimate solution to the story, the ultimate hero. Um, And so the Jewish people were looking forward to uh, a Messiah, someone who was going to deliver them. Uh, They were God's people, someone who was going to allow them to to stay in their promised land, who's going to deliver them from their enemies. But Jesus, the Messiah, came, and and the plan was, was much bigger than that, right? The plan is to solve the human problem that we all have uh, ever since Adam and Eve uh, with, with sin entering the world. And so Jesus came to be a suffering and dying Messiah, not a conquering uh, Messiah who, who gives Israel their land. And this is very weird, right? This is very surprising. This isn't what the Jewish people were expecting. 
Um, this isn't what the world was expecting, really. Um, but Jesus, who is God, came into this world for the purpose of living a perfect life uh, that we can't live so that he doesn't have guilt on himself where he deserves punishment uh, and, and instead taking the punishment for us. Um, and so it's, it's odd to have a king who becomes king by dying and suffering instead of conquering. Um, but that's what Jesus was. Uh, and so the Bible teaches that, that the wages of sin is death. And, and God had commanded Israel to offer animal sacrifices all through the Old Testament because uh, there has to be uh, bloodshed uh, for, for sin. There has to be death. There, that's the penalty for sin. But these animal sacrifices never really solved the problem. They were only pointing forward to the real hero coming on the scene who offered himself as the sacrifice, God himself. Uh, who did what these animal deaths could never do, uh, which is to actually take away our sin and make atonement with us. Uh, atonement can be thought of as like sort of these three parts, right? at one to make us one uh, again with God, to restore the brokenness that was created by the sin that we've all done, and that goes all the way back to Adam and Eve, where we, we began to experience physical death and we experienced that separation. So from separation, there's at one There's reconnection back with God, uh, that we're saved by grace through faith. And this is the amazing story that, um, that solves the problem of sin and death and paves the way for us to no longer have to experience the consequences of being separated from God uh, by our sin. Uh, and so Jesus in this way is, is what all of the Old Testament points forward to, and everything that comes after him (laughs) looks back upon. He's the center of the story. He's the climax of the story. He's the solution to all the the problems uh, that we have created with our sin and rebelling against God. Awesome. So we see this then in the in the New Testament. Uh, We get the incarnation and we get the the ministry of Jesus here on earth. We get his life, his death, and resurrection there in the opening of the New Testament, the Gospels. Uh, But before Jesus leaves, he sets up the church and gives it a mission. Can you unpack what that looks like, Trey? Yeah, so Jesus, it's it's so crazy because he he tells his disciples, hey, I'm going to leave you. Um, and they're like, no, please don't. He's like, no, I'm going I'm to leave you. And it's going to be better, actually, when I leave. And they're like, ah, well, I don't understand how that will be. Um, and uh, so he, he actually kind of ascends, goes, goes into heaven, but then sends his Holy Spirit. And his Holy Spirit then dwells in everyone who trusts in Jesus. And uh, he gives, right before he leaves, he gives the church a mission. And, and when we say the word church, it's not, you know, Connection Point Church mm-hmm. or uh, whatever church down the road. When we say like the church, we're talking about everyone around the world who trusts in Jesus, who are Christians. And uh, and what's uh, that's what's amazing about Christianity is it's so diverse, so full of people from all languages and all countries and just everywhere um, all around the world. And all of us who trust in Jesus are the church. And so he gives his disciples, the very first church members, uh, kind of a mission. And it's essentially to continue what he started until he returns. And so he says, hey, go and make disciples, people who, who trust in me and follow me, teach them to obey everything I've taught you. And I want you to also baptize them and uh, kind of grow this movement that he has started. And so the church started then and Jesus left. He sent his Holy Spirit because without the Holy Spirit, this would be an impossible task. Uh, But with the Holy Spirit, then we're actually given the power of God to accomplish it. And he uses this metaphor for the church. Um, And this is used all throughout the New Testament. Um, Paul uses it a lot, but he talks about how Jesus is the head and the church is the body. So he's the head of the church, uh, which means kind of in charge. He's the ruler. Um, and then the rest of the church is his body. It's how he acts and moves and interacts with the world. And so what's amazing about our physical bodies is it's made up of so many different parts. 
and they're all unique and they all need each other. They work together. They have different roles. And that's the same thing with everyone in the church. Every one of us is unique. Every one of us is created with a different personality, different passions, different skill sets, and placed in different places and times. And so we all need each other to carry out the mission of God. And we're all under the direction of Jesus, who is the head of the body. And so that's what the, the church kind of mission is, is to continue the work that Jesus did to love God, to love others, to worship Jesus as, as Lord and Savior and King. Uh, until Jesus returns. And that's the period of time and the part of the story that we are still currently in. Yeah, so so you can see the mission kind of take flight there in the book of Acts, and the gospel goes out not just to Jewish people, but to non-Jewish people as well. And then the epistles that round out the rest of the New Testament, these letters that were written to those local bodies of Christ that were beginning to spring up uh, all over. And like you said, the church portion of the story is the part we are in now. But how does Scripture say the story will end, Zach? Yeah, so even though Jesus has conquered sin and death, and he's the hero, and he's already completed the mission, uh, we still die. We still suffer. The world's still broken. So you might say, well, how does that work, right? Well, even though he's conquered sin and death, and uh, and, and the victory is won, um, it's not going to be, we're not going to see all of that until he comes back, right? He's already lived the perfect life. He's already died in our place. The, the offer of salvation is already out there. We're already in the church age, and he's patiently uh, drawing us to himself to take advantage of what Jesus has done. But one day, this, this broken world is going to come to an end. Uh, and then we're going to see the full fruits of what Jesus has already done. And he's going to come back. Uh, and he's going to raise the dead. Uh, all humans that have ever lived are going to be physically resurrected, uh, just as he was resurrected. Um, those who have accepted him to a resurrection body, as he has, that's perfected. Uh, and so we're all going to stand judgment before God. He's going to uh, it, it return on the clouds, just as he ascended to the Father in the, in the sky. Uh, the disciples were watching him go. As he just sort of lifted off, and an angel shows up and says, hey, he's coming back the same way you saw him go. He's going to return on the clouds. When he does, the dead are going to rise. There's going to be a judgment in the end. Um, and um, those who have accepted Christ uh, and what he's already done for us are going to be able to live with him forever in a perfected body uh, uh, after the pattern of his own body, which is incorruptible and will live forever without suffering or death. And those who did not accept what he's done for them will be separated from him uh, forever. Uh, and God's going to perfect this world, right? He's going to uh, burn it up, uh, as it says in, in the Bible, that, that the, the heavens and earth will be purified uh, by fire and made new. It talks about this in Second Peter chapter 3. Some debate about whether this is like a destroying fire uh, to like wipe out this earth and just sort of restart with a perfect one or more of a purifying fire. I tend to think it's a purifying fire. It's, it's, going, it's taking the very good that we had that we've messed up and purifying it like fire does to metal to get the impurities out. And you heat it up real hot and those impurities kind of float to the surface. You can sort of scrape them off. And right. this, is, this is, I think, a purifying fire. Uh, that, that Peter's talking about in Second Peter 3. And, and so, so the world's going to be made new. We're going to dwell in God's direct presence, um, and there's going to be perfection. It's going to be better than the Garden of Eden because um, we're going to be back in a restored relationship with God, uh, but there will no longer even be the possibility of sin entering in or death. So those things are gone and done away with. Um, and there's, there's a very beautiful passage that we read in Revelation um, where it talks about this, Revelation 21, uh, 1 to 4. Uh, you might read that with your, with your student um, about the, the, the old heavens and earth passing away and how God will now, his dwelling place will be with, with man and death will be no more and neither will there be mourning or crying or pain. The old way of things has passed away. Um, and so it's going to be amazing. And so then that'll be how it all ends. Um, and you want to be part of that story, right? You're, you want, you're in this story and you want to be uh, what you were created for. And you were created to be with God forever and for, for that to be where you end up. Um, and so uh, don't, don't reject what God is offering you, right? That's, 
that's the that's the key thing for us to remember as we're going through this story is is don't uh, miss out on how you're, you're supposed to be there for the conclusion of this story and it's going to be an awesome conclusion. Um, don't don't miss it. Yeah, that's that's great. Well, I mean, it's our conviction. Obviously, this is the the true story of the whole world, and uh, in this story, we definitely aren't the hero. That would be Jesus. So, what kind of role do we play? Yeah. I- so many times we make ourselves the hero, which is understandable. Um, but looking at this story, and you're right. What's so amazing about this story is it's like more epic, greater than any story that's ever been told. But it's also true. <laughs> that's like, that's unbelievable. Like, it's the best story ever told, but it's also the most true story ever right. told. It's not, like, not fiction or fairy tale. It's amazing. Yeah. And so, yeah, Jesus is for sure the hero of the story but that doesn't mean that we are insignificant or that we don't have a role to play Um, it's not about us but we we really do can uh, have a purpose and can make an impact and so our first role first of all is to accept Jesus as the hero um, and accept the offer that he's giving us of restoration and freedom from the effects of the fall from the effects of sin he wants to free us from Satan from death from uh, kind of this broken relationship that we have with God and he wants to restore us. And so the first part of our role is just to become children of God, uh, to say, uh, Jesus, I need you and I receive and accept everything you're offering to me. Um, I I lay down kind of my rebellious uh, ways and I'm choosing to embrace you. And so that's the, the first thing. But then the second is God is so gracious and good, he actually chooses to work through us to do his work, um, which I don't know if I would always use people to do my work, but God wants to partner with us. And it's this beautiful opportunity that we have. And so being a part of uh, the church globally, uh, that always looks like being a part of the church locally. And so becoming a part of a local church that's carrying out the mission of God, that's really following the Great Commission, making disciples, that is loving um, the, the people around them. And so partnering with the mission of God until he returns. And so uh, we do that until he returns. That could be today. That could be tomorrow. That could be hundreds of years from now. But the church is going to continue to be faithful, and we have an important role to play in that. That's awesome. Well, we like to wrap up uh, these episodes with a good conversation starter that you might be able to have as the parent or guardian with your your student. So uh, what would be a good conversation starter after this lesson? Yeah, since Jesus is the center of this whole story, um, it'd be great to ask about Jesus. Just ask your student, you know, what what did Jesus accomplish through his life, death, and resurrection? How is he the, the hero of the story? Um, and and see how much they can unpack from some of the things we've we've just talked about. I think that would really get a good conversation going. Yeah, you really can't go wrong with just leaning into Jesus. So that's fantastic. Well, uh, if you've got questions about Connection Point, you can go to cp.church and get some uh, questions answered or uh, links to things there that might be helpful to you and your your family. Uh, Hang in there because we'll be right back with more episodes to help you out with your Uh, student and you yourselves in your own faith. We're praying for you in the meantime.